I'm resistant to changing my coping mechanisms. And I think the primary driver of that is fear that without these tried and true coping mechanisms that I will be unable to handle strong emotions or powerful thoughts or disruptive periods in my life. This is all I've ever known. Is that even possible for me? I don't want to miss anything. I don't need that. I don't want to acknowledge my pain. I don't want to get poked with needles. I don't don't want want that. that. There's nothing wrong. I'm fine. 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 fine. Hey, Bloodstream listeners, we are back with another segment of I'm Fine, where we peel back the layers on mindset and behavior change and maybe even a little stubbornness, especially when it comes to living with a bleeding disorder. It's my life and I will do what I want. Now, that is a sentiment that we have all heard. Maybe we've even said it ourselves a few times. I know I have. It's a declaration of independence. It's a claim of self-sovereignty. And hey, it kind of feels empowering, right? But let's pause and think about it for a second. Because as much as we are captains of our own ships, we're not sailing the vast seas alone. Our lives entwined with those of partners, employers, family. They're all part of a bigger network, a network that cares about us, relies on us, and yes, supports us. While we might not want to admit it, our personal choices ripple out. They impact more than just us. And that's what we're going to discuss today on I'm Fine. I'm here with Patrick James Lynch, my co-host, my pal, a human living with hemophilia. I am a human pal living with hemophilia. Yes, I am. Thanks for sitting in the hot seat, because this one is a hot seat. I'm putting you legitimately in a hot seat. Yes, you did. And you chose the uh, stubborn I'm fine segment. You're yes! like, you know who we need for that? No. My co-host, PJL. So <laughs> yeah. thanks for bringing me on for the stubborn one. <laughs> no worries. That was the that was the email basically. I was like, I think Patrick would be perfect for this. <laughs> Typecast again. Does the phrase, it's my life, I'll do what I want, resonate with you? So... Kind of ish. Agency and empowerment are words that we talk about a lot when it comes to people with bleeding disorders and and helping patients manage their condition. Um, But from a lived experience point of view, actually feeling and believing that this is my life and I have choice and I'm in control is not intrinsic for me. Over the course of my life, though, especially in childhood, this entrenched idea of resiliency and the need to believe that I am safe led to me adopting a I can make it work attitude mm-hmm. toward most things. And that action and solutions oriented, you know, attitude isn't wholly bad per se, but I know that it's problematic when over time it builds walls and blinders mm. to what my true needs are. If I'm just starting from a position of no, I'm fine, no, I can make it work, it's disconnecting me from first being in touch with what's actually going on within me. So those true needs then get repressed over time, right? And they're unexplored until they eventually demand attention in less than elegant ways. And now as a full-fledged adult in the world, this quote that you cited of like, it's my life, I'll do what I want, Mm -hmm. it resonates with me more now than it did in childhood. But at my core, I still don't believe that I have that much control or agency over my life. Hmm. How have your decisions or choices affected the people in your life? Your wife, your daughter, your coworkers? Oh, boy. well, you tell me, coworker. Yeah. I mean, look, it's a double edged sword. I'm fine is my firm sense of resolve and my mission driven approach to trying to accomplish things and move my life forward. It can be contagious and energizing to the people around me. And I've seen that in my family and in my colleagues, but it can also be exhausting. And I don't always have the tools that I need to help others or myself contend with that exhaustion that can come from like stubbornly striving towards something. Mm. Um, But on a more personal level, having spent as much time as I have this year with the concept of I'm fine, entrenched resiliency, I think the I'm fine mindset has really hurt me relationally. Mm. It doesn't allow people in. It doesn't require me to feel vulnerability. It prevents me from getting hurt, It kind of, while also creating disconnection from other people. So I guess I don't know exactly how my I'm fine mindset has impacted the people around me. You tell me. Uh, but these are some of the things that I have observed and experienced. 
What is one area of your life that you resist change? This is such a great and annoying <laughs> question. I was like, really, Amy? So the first thing that comes to mind is coping mechanisms. I'm resistant to changing my coping mechanisms. And I think the primary driver of that is fear that without these tried and true coping mechanisms that I will be unable to handle strong emotions or powerful thoughts or disruptive periods in my life. And then I end up behaving in problematic or, or damaging ways. Rationally, I know that eating two cartons of ice cream after completing two medium Domino's pizzas, albeit for a special deal that I had earned over time, is unhealthy. But in the moments of emotional distress, it's instant gratification and something I can depend on for at least the next 30 to 60 minutes. It's a terrible plan, but given that I've been pretty actively battling with changing my coping mechanisms this year, it feels like that's the obvious answer to your question. Uh, throwing you a curveball going rogue, is there anything that you would like to say to the people in your life, your support system, kind of knowing that this year has been a lot, like you've been entrenched in the I'm fine mindset? Is there anything you'd like to say to your support system? I would say thank you to my support system for patience and grace with the moments that um, I haven't been as available mm. or as warm um, as I can be, because when I get into an entrenched place, I think my warmth and my empathy go down um, and I become just much more strategic and calculating to kind of survive and get me through. But again, it's disconnecting. So to those who uh, mm -hmm. to those who may have felt disconnection from me at some point this year, sorry about that. And I'm working on it. It's not about losing our sense of freedom. It's about acknowledging our connections, as Patrick so lovingly did. Do it for yourself, absolutely. Your health and your well-being, it's the foundation upon which you build your life. But remember, doing it for yourself also means you're doing it for those you love. They want to see you thrive not just survive. And changing behaviors, especially when living with chronic conditions, it's an act of love, an act of respect, not only for your life, but for the shared journey with those around you. Take that step. Whether it's scheduling a treatment, reaching out for support, or simply taking a moment to appreciate your health journey, you're not doing it just for you. You're doing it for a network that extends far beyond yourself. Subscribe to the Bloodstream Podcast wherever you get your podcast and stay tuned, take care, and remember, fine can always get better. Catch you next time on I'm Fine.